In this episode, I take a look at how Van Thorpe's SQN metric, or the system quality number, can be calculated from the R multiple and expectancy metrics that we studied in the previous two episodes. Although R multiple and expectancy values can be useful in their own right for helping to assess individual trading strategies, the SQN was designed specifically to allow the comparison of different trading systems. Personally, I also suspect that the SQN might be able to help when comparing the results from different parameters in an optimization. Stay tuned. The concepts behind R multiples, expectancy, and the SQN, or system quality number, are all intrinsically linked. And one follows on nicely from the foundations built by the previous one. I love the simplicity of the R multiple concept and believe that it can bring clarity to how the internals of individual trades are performing. Expectancy is then calculated using these R multiple values to provide a view of the overall trading strategy, to give you an indication of how you can expect it to perform as a whole. The SQN takes this even further and extends the usefulness of the concepts. Let's take a look. The system quality number was devised by Dr. Van K. Thorpe. And the calculation of this is based on the foundation components of R multiples and expectancy, both of which Van Tharp also devised, of course. But the SQN specifically sets out to measure the quality of a trading system. What's more, based on the type of trades and the distribution of those trades, it also aims to provide a measure of how easy it will be for a trader to trade that strategy. So, as I said, the primary purpose of the SQN is to compare different strategies. However, Van Tharp has also applied a tweaked version of the SQN in order to measure the relative performance of numerous ETFs and markets. But this is an area that I'm not going to study, so if you want more information about this, I suggest you go to Van Tharp's website. What I'm more interested in is whether the SQN can also be used to effectively compare the parameter values from an optimization. But first of all, let's take a look at how the SQN is calculated. Now, the basic form of the calculation is relatively simple. It's simply the expectancy. And of course, that is the mean of all of the individual or multiple values, which is then divided by the standard deviation of those R multiple values. And the idea behind this is that we're not just concerned about a high expectancy. We also want to see consistency in those R multiple values. And it's that consistency that means it will be a more usable and tradable strategy. So the higher the variance in the R multiple values, the lower the SQN will be. And then in this basic version of the calculation, the result of that is then multiplied by the square root of the number of trades. And the effect of this is to punish those systems that only have a small sample size and a small number of trades, because they're, of course, less statistically significant. However, Van Tharp himself realized there was a problem with this. And this is in relation to systems that have very large numbers of trades. And this tends to dominate the eventual SQN value. So Van Tharp then went on to suggest that for systems that have less than 100 trades, this original calculation is used. However, for systems in excess of this, then that limit on the number of trades is capped at 100. So effectively, this means that if a system has 1,000 trades, it will still be multiplied by the square root of 100, which of course is 10. So what Van Tharp is effectively saying here, if you think about it, 
is that systems that generate fewer than 100 trades can't be classed as statistically significant and therefore need to be punished with this additional metric. However, any system that generates 100 or more trades is statistically significant and therefore the expectancy over the standard deviation of the R multiples doesn't need to be adjusted any further. Now, my personal opinion here is that yes, I agree with the principle of what Van Tharp is suggesting here. However, I think that the value of 100 is too low. As many of you will have seen in my previous videos and the analysis that I've personally undertaken to identify what is a statistically significant number of trades, this has shown that it's not 100 and actually you should really be aiming for thousands of trades. And so, personally, when I investigate the use of SQN, I will be setting my threshold much higher. And that brings me on quite nicely to what I'm going to be doing in the next two episodes. I'm going to be taking the theory that we've learned about R multiples, expectancy and the SQN and putting them all into practice. I'll be showing you how I feel that the R multiple value can be used in the analysis of the trades within an optimization, and then going on to look at how expectancy and the SQN can potentially operate as performance metrics in an optimization. So in other words, to help us with the comparison of different parameter values. Now, if the next of those two episodes is already available, then you'll see it top right now. If not, do remember to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when they are. Please do give me a thumbs up, that's always very much appreciated. And now until next time, trade safe.